Um, how many people here work with WordPress? A few of you? How many people here um, have a site on WordPress? More of you, cool. Um, so today I'm gonna to be talking about serving PHP happily, which is actually a bit of a pun, um, as you will see later on. Let's see if this, no. Helps if you actually turn your clicker on. So WordPress, um, I'm just gonna give you some basic 101 <laughs> of WordPress, um, and that's got nothing really to do with my talk, but I think if there's anything that you take away from this talk and you just get bored of my talk, that's absolutely fine. The first two or three slides are the most important. First and foremost, WordPress.org and WordPress.com are not the same thing. Um, that's probably my biggest, actually second biggest thing that I dislike about when people get things mixed up with WordPress. Um, and today when I talk about WordPress, I am not talking about WordPress.com. I do not work for Automatic. I can't speak on their behalf and I don't know anything about their systems at .com. So don't come and ask me about .com. Instead, I'm gonna be talking about WordPress.org, which is basically the thing you download when you are looking to download WordPress as a content management system and self-host. Um, and also, I will mention a few times the concept of WordPress core, and when I say WordPress core as a phrase, what I mean is the package that you download when you um, download WordPress. Um, the other thing that you should learn about WordPress is that we are so passionate about our capital P in the word WordPress, we have a function for it called capital P dang it. Um, and a very, very quick way to tell if how serious someone is about being a WordPress developer or a WordPress engineer is to just look at how they spell WordPress. So that's a pro tip for anyone who's planning to join the WordPress industry. Um, with that said, let's start with some facts. At the moment, WordPress is 30.5 percent of the top 10 million sites in the world, which makes my heart stop because it means that the open source project that I work on is helping a lot of people, which is super cool, but also, oh my lord, if, some, if we break something, that's a lot of people that we're affecting, and it uh, makes me cry in a little bit. Um, if you actually want to look at it in terms of PHP, PHP is used by 83.3 percent of the websites that they can actually find out what server-side programming language they're using. Um, all these data, pieces of data is from W3 Tech, um, and because it's on the internet, it's obviously true. Um, and when you break down content management systems, just under 50% don't actually use a content management system or they can't detect it, uh, but the ones they can detect, um, you know, th there is 30.5% being WordPress, which is, if you think about it, 49% nothing, plus 30%, that's a lot of the internet. Um, and if you just look at content management systems, WordPress is actually 60% of the market share, which is a large amount of market share, like scarily large. And when you look at the rest, like the next imperative number, Joomla is at 3.1%. That's madness, considering how far WordPress has got. And what's even more maddening is that the minimum version for, P, uh, for WordPress is PHP 5.2. It is still <laughs> PHP 5.2.4. Um, so yeah, that's probably, as a community engineer, the number one question I get. Why is WordPress still on PHP 5.2.4? Why do you still support it? So today's talk is about answering that question. And it's even more scary when you think end of life for 5.2.4 was on 6th of January 2011, which is only a year after I joined the industry, so, you know, a very long time ago. So as a PHP developer, no wonder we all feel like this. It's like, oh my gosh, what on earth is this WordPress community doing, considering you're such a large market share of both PHP community and of the CMSs and the internet. Let's have a look at some history. WordPress next month is going to be 15 years old. 15 years old in human terms means that we would be in GCSEs first or second year maybe. Um, so we're just about to take our GCSEs potentially. Um, yeah, we're teenagers, probably a bit angsty. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, we're starting to have our own opinions and thoughts. 
Um, and actually, considering when it was 15 years old, 15 years ago, the thing that was out and the current version of PHP was PHP version 4.3. Uh, WordPress is also very good at watching, listening, but not partaking. And this is true in both PHP Fig, the PHP internals. Um, in fact, any part of the PHP community, you will generally not see any representation from WordPress officially um, because we just like to watch the whole community have a discussion and then we'll just make our own mind up afterwards. Um, and that's very, very um, true when it came to Go PHP 5. Um, GoPHP 5 was an initiative to move the PHP community and hosting and all the projects from PHP 4 to PHP 5.2. And it was an initiative that started with the Drupal community. Now, what's really cool with Drupal is um, they have a large um, life cycle. So it takes a long time for them to actually create um, the next version of the CMS. And I say that in relative terms to WordPress. They announced for GoPHP um, 5 that Drupal 7 would be on PHP 5.2. Now, the life cycle difference between Drupal and WordPress is the difference between years and months. At the time, WordPress was doing releases every three to four months, a new release was coming out. So that's, you know, three releases, four releases a year, compared to Drupal, which would do a major release every four or five years. That's a bit of a difference. And so yes, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is WordPress. But to do that, I think we need to look at the values of what WordPress stands for. And WordPress's values lie in its users. This is why WordPress is so popular. WordPress is popular because as a user, you don't need to worry about things. We care about our users first and foremost. And when we talk about users, we're not talking about developers. We're talking about the person walking down the street who wants to write something, share something, create a site about something, you know, create a site that tells you all the extinguishers they've ever seen because they take photos and blog about extinguishers. There is a blog post, uh, a blog out there with just extinguishers on it. I do not kid you. Um, but we are caring about the users, the very, very end user, not about developers. So when it comes to a lot of the decisions that WordPress makes, they don't make sense to developers because they're not de designed for us as developers, which, don't get me wrong, is frustrating. But this user's first mindset has served WordPress well. It made us. 30.5% 30 of the web. And it now means that the likes of Google, Microsoft, and agencies that were typically other CMSs um, driven are now looking to WordPress and looking to have a bite of the WordPress pie. If you want a technology to be popular, you go to WordPress and make sure that WordPress is agreeing to take it on. And if you don't believe me, all I have to say to you is react. Does anyone remember what happened with React? So React had a license. React is a JavaScript library created by Facebook. Um, and it had a license, which was the typical Facebook licensing, which was MIT plus Facebook patent weirdo things. Um, and WordPress is looking at adopting um, a JavaScript library to build a whole new editor experience at the moment. And the two contenders was React and Vue. Now, when it came down to it, the React license was not compliant with the GPL mindset of WordPress, and therefore, WordPress couldn't take on React. Within three days of that announcement, the React licensing for Facebook got changed. That's a big deal. There's not many projects out there that has that kind of leverage the same way that WordPress does. And the other question you have to ask yourself is, what do you get from removing 5.2 support? As developers, that's an easy answer. Namespacing, you know, if we get to 7.2 or 7.1, you know, date and time that actually works correctly with no bugs. Um, but as a user, what do you get? Speed. 
But let's face it, if your site is a few hundred, does it really matter? It does depend. Anyone else? More secure. More secure, yes. But your, your everyday person, do they really care? They would. The reality of it is the cost to actually secure um, older versions of uh, PHP is actually quite easy for WordPress because they can just bundle things in. There is a cost to this. There is the financial cost if you get hacked. There's also the mental cost, also if you get hacked. Um, but also as a mental cost to development, the mental cost to having to work out for your business whether you can afford to upgrade. And the other thing is that you have to remember, WordPress is a project spurred on by volunteers. It's all volunteer driven. Now some of those volunteers are paid for by companies to solely volunteer, but it's still volunteers ultimately. And with volunteers, there's a sense of responsibility and priorities that come into play. So it's a question of, on the crazy long list of things that we have to do, is it a priority or responsibility high enough? Is that value high enough for us to take responsibility or pr prioritize it? And the reality of it, regardless if we up the minimum version of PHP for WordPress, the WordPress core will not suddenly change. It's not like they're going to just rip out everything at the last minute. How many people remember the Browse Happy project? A few of you. Yeah. So the Browse Happy project, for anyone who didn't, um, wasn't part of this, uh, was basically a way that a lot of the uh, web dev community kind of got together and was said, enough of IE6. We need to move everyone away from IE6. So it was um, a way to push everyone. If you go to browsehappy.org, I think it is, um, it would then tell people where, what other browsers were available. People just didn't know. And so what ended up happening during that period was on websites, there would be a nil banner, kind of like the cookie banner at the moment, which would say, hey, we detect that you're on running on an old version of whatever. Why don't you check out some more modern ones? Um, and that was a way to push this project on. Um, this project is still going. It still gets updated every so often. It's actually being run by the WordPress um, community now. Um, so it's just a WordPress site. But when it comes to effort, WordPress hasn't been sitting on its laurels. In fact, WordPress has been doing a lot as a project in the background. But a lot of, we kind of do a lot of things and not talk about it. So I'm here to talk to you about some of the things that we've done. First and foremost, hosting providers. I was in um, WordCamp San Francisco um, in 2014, and it was the first time I'd ever traveled abroad, um, like, I would say, like, outside of Europe um, for work. And it was like, WordCamp San Francisco is kind of like, for me, the, the, the conference of PHP that I would resemble it to in the PHP world is like ZenCon. Going to work out San Francisco was like this big shining thing that, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going to San Francisco and I'm going to work out San Francisco. And um, it was a really cool experience. One lunchtime, I was, ended up grabbing a table and sitting with um, two core committers, um, Nason and Mark Jaquith. Two very nice people. And being someone who was fresh into the WordPress community, who, you know, had a million questions as a PhD develop developer, Obviously, my first question is, why can't we just drop 5.2? <laughs> and they told me the reason why. And then the second question I asked them was, well, OK, that seems like a sensible answer. So what are we going to do about it? And their answer was hosting providers. I went to San Francisco was in the second half of 2014. Now, this is a slide that shows you the PHP usage over time. Um, and the blue one at the very bottom is PHP 5.2. Now, there's a cliff in the middle right there, a very big cliff. And if we s have a look at that cliff, um, I know you can't see the numbers at the back, but, and I can't see them on the screen either. <laughs> this is uh, 2015 week seven, and it's 31% 30 of the web, 32% of the web of the usage of is using PHP 5.2. Now, 
three weeks later in week 10, it goes down to 16.37%. That's a 15% decrease, just about. It's pretty impressive. And what had happened was that the core committers of WordPress had been speaking to a lot of hosting providers and they had selected the biggest hosting providers. So people like GoDaddy, one and one the ones which had servers and servers and servers full of WordPress sites and said, what do we need to do for you to move everything to a newer version of PHP? And you would think that the hosting providers would be like, go away. But actually, they were really responsive and they said, let's work together, let's bring this down. And so we end up with a cliff, a crazy cliff like that, which is pretty impressive. If you look at the stats today, um, uh, PHP 5.2 is still 3.2%. And this, these are today's stats. If you go to this website, wordpress.org slash about slash stats, it only shows you daily stats of every single day. Um, so today, it's 3.2% uh, um, of WordPress sites are using 5.2. But then if you look at 7.2, it's only 1%, which is really sad. Like, that should be bigger. But if you actually look at the bigger scope of things, 7 plus is actually over a quarter of that pie chart, which is pretty good. It would be really cool if the core committers could go to every hosting company in the world and be like, hey, what do, and ask that same question, what do we need to do to move you off PHP 5.2, how can we help? How can we help you test this stuff? And the reality of it is, is that hosting companies are like a massive comet. The whole entire community is like a massive comet. You can deal with the head of the comet, which is like the large hosting providers, but this tail, this massive tail, which is, you know, local hosting providers across the world, you, you know, your one that's based in York or the one that's based down the road, those are a lot smaller and it's harder for a group of 15 people to go knocking on all those doors. So instead, WordPress made a hosting team an official team of part of the project. Um, and so it means that we can actually build a hosting community and encourage more hosters to come along and learn from each other. And that way they can share how they move people. It would be nice if that graph actually showed that 5.2 just disappeared. And when they went back to the, some of the hosting providers and said, why couldn't you? The answer wasn't WordPress. WordPress works on most versions of PHP, um, including the latest and greatest. It's the other things on the same hosting providers, on the same servers, on the shared environments. So if you've ever worked on a WordPress site and added in a random obviously important PHP script that's hard-coded, a whole bunch of data in it, it's not part of WordPress, it's just that thing on the side that just connects two APIs together or something. Those things are the reason why WordPress can't like, use that as an upgrade. If you have old Drupal sites on there, or old PHP projects on a server, and then you've forgotten about it, but it's only two pounds a month, right? So you don't even notice it on your bank account. All those things add up. It's not WordPress's problem, yet yeah, everyone blames WordPress because obviously we're a big massive moving target. And that's okay, we're okay with that. But I'm here to tell you, it's kind of all our faults. Another thing that the uh, WordPress community did, and um, amazingly um, was really, really well received, was change the language on the website. So Andrea Fault, she used to be a PHP and internal person, was looking at the WordPress site and noticed that our language was rather terrible. Um, so she went onto our track um, and said, hey, I think you should change your language. Now, WordPress works across the world. It's got over 50 different languages. Um, and we have Rosetta sites, which are basically like um, copies and duplicates that are translated. So language is a very, very problematic thing. Even just looking at English, there's at least five versions of English. There's Aussies, New Zealand, British English, US English, which apparently is the real English, but I disagree. Um, you know, <laughs> there's, there's so many different versions of English, never mind all the other languages, like Spanish, which has like 10 versions of Spanish, or two versions of German. Um, 
all those add up. So when you choose the official choices of words to put on the website, you don't just think about English or US English. You think about how does this translate and does it translate easily? Um, what's really cool is that the site now says at the very top, and you can't really see it there, but I did remember to make a screenshot a bit bigger, is that on the requirements page, it literally says 5. Uh, 5.2, 7.2, <laughs> uh, 7.2 or greater, which should let us uh, be okay for a while. So we did change the language, which is great. At least now, we don't say the minimum requirement is 5.2. What we say is, we recommend something of this size. Please go and get that. And when it comes to PHP 7, in 2015, in September, there's a post by um, Aaron Jorbin, um, who basically states the intentions of WordPress and the, the upcoming version of PHP 7. And basically, in it, he says, PHP 7 is currently targeted for the release of November 12, 2015. Coincidentally, this is also the date that WordPress intends to officially fully support PHP 7. Now, let's just ignore the fact that PHP 7 came out a month late. But to do that meant that ahead of time, we were already testing PHP 7. Uh, when it came to WordPress and PHP 7, WordPress was one of the projects that was ready. It was ready way ahead of time. And all, the reason why it wasn't officially supported was because, because on Travis CI, they just had put you know, dev environment, and they just needed to switch the tag on it, and that was it. So they were just waiting. That was all they were doing. And there was a call to action to get people to test this ahead of time. Another thing that the WordPress community has done recently is um, last year, August last year, which basically, if you've ever written a plugin, added an extra tag into it, which means that you as a developer, as a plugin developer, can state which minimum version of PHP you are willing to support. Now, support is an interesting word. Generally, support means you are willing to answer questions if it's running on a version of PHP that's that version or higher. And this is what it means to us but it do, as a developer, it doesn't mean that you have to ignore all the past versions. So you can still write a, pl a plugin that has a minimum version of PHP 7, but it could work on 5.6. Why not? You don't have to use everything in PHP 7, and some stuff is backwards compatible. Now, if we look at Yoast SEO, how many people know what this plugin is? I've heard of it. Cool. So Yoast SEO is one of the biggest um, plugins out there in the WordPress community. If you are a WordPresser and you haven't worked, heard of Yoast SEO, then you're probably not using a site that is trying to get up on the Google rankings. Um, it kind of looks like something like this. Um, and on here, it states that there's about at least 5 million active installations on this. What was really interesting with Yoast, and it's not the first plugin to have done this, but rather it's one of the first large plugins to do this, was that they announced um, March last year that they were going to start urging users to upgrade to PHP 7. And they did it in a very, very aggressive way. This is um, WP Tavern. If you're ever into like um, social gossip of WordPress, WP Tavern is basically like tabloid for WordPress. Dead fun. Just don't read the comments because it will make you cry. Um, pardon? This especially is where WordPress goes to do that. Um, yes. And what they did was they added a massive, big, ugly, intentionally ugly, non-dismissible message to anything that they saw running anything um, on PHP 5.2. Their notice also encouraged people to contact their hosts if they didn't know how to upgrade the PHP. Um, and they knew it was going to be painful for hosts, so they actually made sure their support team were ready to help hosting companies as well. Three weeks later, uh, WP Tavern um, published another post. And in it, it states, from December to March, 
PHP 5.2 usage amongst Yoast SEO users decreased from 1.9% to 1.7%. That's a modest drop of 0.2% over three months. Now, the NAG was added on March the 21st, 2017, <laughs> and the PHP 5.2 usage dropped from 1.7% to 1.3%, which is... 0.4% drop, which is double what happened in three months naturally, which I think is quite interesting. What's also interesting is that even though they only um, attached it to PHP 5.2 because of all the conversations going on around this, PHP 5.3 usage also dropped because they started educating people about the benefits of upgrading to um, a newer version of PHP. And speed is definitely one of the best selling points you can give to someone. <laughs> now, if you think 0.4%, 0.2% doesn't sound like a large number, um, Yoast, um, the uh, CEO of the plugin, estimates that's about 1.5 million sites that are actually updating. And that also means that there's about 14 to 20,000 upgrades from 5.3 onwards, which is a decent number. It's not going to break world records or anything, but it's a decent number. It helps. And to make it even easier, they made an um, extension for any plugin developers out there called WIP. And it's on their GitHub repo. So if you're thinking about doing this on your own plugins, um, you can just take that and put it into your projects. Now, I talked about language before, and this is the forums um, from WordPress.org, and in it, it says, the plugin states that it requires PHP 5.2.4. Our site is running PHP 5.5.38, which is a presumed a more up-to-date version, unfortunately with no option to run PHP 5.2.4. Is there a work around this? Can we expect the plugin to be compatible with other versions of PHP? Or should we be looking to use a different plugin? Now, as developers, we're like, surely it's obvious, right? <laughs> this number is bigger than that number, therefore it will work. But this is the WordPress community. Welcome to our world. And remember, we're users first, so we kind of accepted this as part of the terms and conditions of being part of the WordPress community. Um, and so, one of their plugin support people wrote, wrote back and said, PHP 5.2 is a minimum requirement. We recommend using PHP 5.6 or newer with a strong preference for PHP 7 or newer. Now, what's interesting with this is if we would go back a few slides, is that there's a problem right here. Requires PHP version. The one word that's missing there is minimum requirement. And so you're going to get fun questions like this. Only one and a half months ago. So I can't even say that it was you know, last year or something. It's literally a new conversation. And this is what happens in the WordPress community day in, day out. But the amazing thing about the community is that the amount of support there is to encourage people means that we can do projects like Surf Happy. So, Surf Happy Project is a project currently running as a feature project in WordPress, which means that it's a project that we really care about and is going to go and happen. So, it's not a maybe project. Um, and what it is all about is upgrading people to the latest version of PHP. Um, we've obviously done a lot of work over the last four years, but now that work it's kind of come to a close in the sense that we've done everything we can without annoying the users. So the last push, really, that we have is to annoy the users. Um, and it's coming in three, real, in reality it's four, but the Surf Happy team will say three stages. And I'm going to go through these stages with you. So the first stage, um, actually, is already live and out there. It happened in Q1. 
Um, and it's the Surf Happy information page. So now on the WordPress website, there is a very, very long document um, that is about teaching people the importance of PHP and why they should upgrade and how to upgrade. Now, there is a conversation at the moment where they're debating if the content should be like the Browse Happy project, where it's agnostic to WordPress so that other projects can use it. Um, but at the moment, the content is out there, so at least the WordPress project can get on with its job. And the reason why this was important to happen first is because in Q2, there is going to be an admin widget added into WordPress core. Now, if you haven't seen WordPress's backend administration screen, this is what it looks like. And this is basically the first thing that you see when you log into WordPress. And what they're suggesting is basically to do something like this. If they accept this as a solution, I will be so happy, but somehow I don't think it's going to happen. And the plan is to basically have a link in there which will take them back to the page on upgrading PHP. So you wouldn't have too much information in the admin screen, but you'll be taken away to be able to learn more about the reasons why to upgrade your PHP versions. Seems really easy to us as developers, but to users, this is something new to them. They have never had to think about how a car works. They just drive, right? Now that we're teaching them how the car also works, at least as a box. There's a magic box here. In Q3 this year, um, there's also something happening in the plugins repo. I um, shared this screenshot before, which was about minimum PHP version requirements and how we can now request a tag on the minimum version required. At the bottom of this, Sergey writes, as a next step, the WordPress core team is going to look into showing users a notice that they cannot install a certain plugin or theme because their install does not meet the required criteria. So that tag that we currently have in that doesn't actually do anything except look pretty on websites is actually going to become enforceable in the near future, which hopefully means users will we'll actually call the hosting providers and actually start blocking them from being able to do certain things. If their favorite plugins are no longer usable by them, they are more likely to go, okay, well, what do I do? Upgrade. Here's the information you need to copy and paste to your hosting provider. It's that easy. Otherwise, we will help you find another hosting provider, and we know a lot of them. And as a bonus round, community support drive. How many people can guess the amount of meetups there are in the WordPress community across the world? Do you want to guess a number? No one dare? 200. 200? You think it's a good guess? 700. 603 as of this morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's just meetups. There's just under 200 conferences across the globe as well annually. That's what you meant, okay, got it. You obviously read my mind ahead of time. <laughs> um, that is a lot of meetups across the world. You know, 600 meetups. That's a lot of people that we have on the ground teaching WordPress, talking about WordPress, sharing support. So imagine if as a user, you log into your WordPress admin, admin page, see this thing and be like, what is this? It's cool, we already have an army of people across the world, you just need to go to your latest meetup. Um, and so what's happening, they've just finished actually their first round, at WordCamp London, which is happening at the moment in London, um, is that they've introduced the concept of a PHP upgrade bar. It's basically an MOT test center for WordPress sites. And we're test running it at WordCamp London because I basically convinced them to. Um, and the right people were all there. So, the Surf Happy team are all there, and the support team leads are all there. So we thought this is a great place to test run what we could do to roll out to 600 plus meetups and two, uh, just under 200 um, work camps across the world, the concept of a PHP upgrade bar. If this is successful over the next two days, it will mean that we can actually just roll this out to every single user group. It means that we can actually get every single user group to do one event 
which is all about upgrading PHP and teaching people the importance of this. Pretty cool. At least I think it is. Um, but I'm in the bubble, so obviously I'm going to think it is. What about PHP 5.3? I mean, we've only been talking about PHP 5.2. 5.3 is also dead, right? Um, we're starting off with PHP 5.2 because it's a good test bed. It's the first experiment, um, and therefore we're testing a few things. The PHP version in the admin widget and in the other places is not hard coded. It is actually an API call, so they, all they have to do as the core team is change the minimum requirement in one location on the um, WordPress.org site, and then they can just roll out whatever version of PHP that they, they want everyone to agree to, which is pretty cool and pretty handy. Um, they have also want to test out the, the language that they've been using at the moment, because we have only have to deal with 3.2% of that pie, not any bigger. If PHP 5.2 end of life project goes well, then obviously we're going to be moving it forward and it will go well because we don't have any other choice. And it also means that we can test out the support team's scaling abilities because WordPress as a project is volunteers from the top to the bottom and really is a horizontal scale. The support team have a really important role of managing Manning all the IRC channels, the Facebook groups, the forums, any method of communication to WordPress.org, they man all that. And so having a handful of people being able to test out what language is most, most well received, what is mo most translatable, is a good way to make sure that we can actually scale this for 5.3, which has a larger percentage of that pie. And even if you look at 5.6, which is quite I think it was about two, well, a third of the pie when we looked at it before. That's a large part of the pie. So to have a project and have a, a go bag and a rule set that we can keep on churning out for the future is an important part of this experiment. Let's look into the future. What does it include? It's all about carrots in the WordPress community. And when I say carrots, I mean we want to try and encourage people as much as possible to come along. So some of the ideas that we've been playing with is actually version gating features. There has been discussions over whether future versions of WordPress, even though it will work on older versions of PHP, we will just version gate it and say you need to be on PHP 7.2 to get this feature. Now, it seems a bit harsh, but when you've tried every other nice thing to do and you're at your last resorts, it, you know, why not? Yeah, but you're assuming that most people know how to comment out a line. So, I'll finish my slides. Thanks. Um, the other thing we're going to do is encourage people. We don't want to be overbearing parents because when you're overbearing parents, at least as a kid, I just shut off. I don't know about you lot, but if someone's telling you to do something and telling you aggressively to do something, you're just like, oh, whatever. But if you actually encourage people, you're more likely to get a better response. And this has actually got an official term called positive reinforcement. Um, and it's been tested by other industries, like the hotel and infosec industry, for example. How many people here have been staying at a hotel or have stayed at a hotel and seen one of these you know, recycle or reuse your, your towel, please, so that we don't have to wash it. There's been studies on what is the best language to use in those. If you write down 30% of this hotel reuse their towels, even though 30% is actually a small amount, it's a minority group, more people actually end up reusing their towels. Because it's not the concept of the number, but People are reusing the towels, and therefore you want to be part of that group of people, therefore you join them. If you look at the uh, National Cyber Security Center, they also changed their language recently. Um, and I say recently, two years ago, three years ago, <laughs> um, uh, where they encourage people to use 
password guidance in a positive manner. If you say to people, 80% of people have weak passwords, your brain just goes, yeah, I'm in the majority, it's all good. Like, we're all in the same ship together, even though that ship is, you know, got massive holes in it. We're in the boat together, so it's fine. But if you actually say 20% of people are using strong passwords, and we recommend you do it too, people are more likely to go that way. And if you go to any InfoSec um, conference at the moment, there is a big surge on positive reinforcement across the whole of the InfoSec community. If you want to know about InfoSec conferences, come and speak to me later. So some takeaways. It's a hard fact that WordPress will never be the same as PHP. And what I mean by that is the version of PHP that is the latest and greatest and that the PHP community is recommending, WordPress will not be having that as their minimum requirement. It's just the PHP community runs a lot faster and WordPress community and its users is a very, very, very big elephant and it's just harder to move, unfortunately. But when we do move, it gets somewhere. Also, we also have to be considerate of an open source project's timing, priorities, and availability. The Surf Happy project has been a concept for many, many years, but it hasn't be happened because it didn't have the volunteers it needed to carry the project forward. Now that we do have those people, they've taken ownership and they've ran with it. And that's all it took. It took ownership of a group of people. Being responsible for 30% of the web is hard, like crazy hard. I don't know how the core committers sleep. I would like to know because maybe I'll get some better sleep, but I can't imagine the weight that is on their shoulders knowing that they could easily break a whole bunch of sites and yes, every so often do. And positive reinforcement is an important concept and it's a concept that as developers, we don't tend to use that often and I think we should. If we celebrated people moving forward and made it a gratification and a good feel, then people are more likely to do it and encourage other people to do it. The power is in all of us, and I mean that as both the PHP community and the WordPress community to be encouraging people to upgrade PHP, whatever project you're running on. And with that, I'd like to thank you. There are resource links at the end of my slides, but if you have any questions, now's a good time. Thanks. <laughs>
as a person who works in an enterprise level agency, all our projects are on PHP 7.2. What we're seeing is everyone else, and it's hard to include them. So at work, with our plugins, with our code, we are using all the newfangled things because, you know, that's all fine. Um, what I'm excited about personally, apart from namespacing, because that's the obvious thing, is date time that works. <laughs> Because I do a lot of date time things, I'm a bit of a date time geek, and the amount of conversations I've had with Derek about date time is um, enough to write another book on date time. So, yeah, I would love to see date time actually fully working. Any other questions? Cool. Well, if you do have any other questions, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go to London to go and check out the PHP Upgrade Bar um, tomorrow. So I'll be leaving during lunch. Um, but you can email me at jenny at humanmade.com if you have any other questions or comments or if you want to partake and see what the results are. Or um, find me on Twitter. I do recommend you tweeting at me rather than emailing me because my inbox is basically a black hole. But <laughs> every so often, it does get to inbox zero, which means I do actually read them. It just it might be like weeks and months rather than like 24 hour periods. So if you want an instant response at Miss JRO, and if I can't answer it, what I do is I retweet it and someone else picks it up, which is really handy. Um, where, and you know, community support and all. Otherwise, emails and uh, I will get back to you. I promise it's just, it does take time, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, thank you for listening.